The purpose of this video is to try to cover the major steps needed to do a full fluid flush, fluid level adjustment, and change of filters in a 2014 Nissan Altima. According to Nissan, the transmission is a sealed unit and the fluid only needs changing every 60,000 miles if it's subjected to extreme heavy duty towing conditions, etc. And they claim that the filters are not serviceable. Well, this is just ridiculous. As I'll show in the schematics, you have two filters that are serviceable. And I will also mention a simple procedure, as mentioned in other videos, that you can use to completely flush and safely flush the fluid out of your transmission. I've marked on this schematic that I borrowed from NissanPartsDeal.com showing you a number of the parts that you will need for this procedure. You need the oil pan gasket, you need the pan bolt crush washer, you also need the adjusting bolt crush washer, as well as the fine paper filter and the housing o-ring filter for the paper filter. I have an arrow drawn showing the mesh filter that is inside the transmission that can be replaced. It is just a wire mesh filter to handle small particles. If there's any part of this that you don't do, you could probably get away with not changing this filter. It also probably could be cleaned. I, however, chose to side with caution and just go ahead and replace it. You also need about 10 quarts of NS3. I would recommend go ahead and ordering a whole case. Yes, the fluid's not cheap, but if you can find it on eBay, you may be able to find a halfway decent deal on it. I know other people talk about using different fluids in the transmission, and of course Nissan does not make their own fluid, but I don't know who does, and when it comes to the fluid on these transmissions in particular, I'm not going to mess around putting in something besides the dealer fluid, just to make sure I don't have any problems. This is a picture of the fill tube in the Altima for the transmission that does not have a dipstick. It has a cap that clips on and seals with O-rings. In order to get this cap off on mine, since it's never been opened, I had to take a pair of needle nose pliers and literally break out the plastic in the center where I have the arrow pointing to reveal a tab that you have to push in with a screwdriver in order to wrestle the cap off. Once you get the cap off, you can use a narrow funnel to fill your transmission with. Unfortunately, I didn't video actually doing this, but you can find plenty of other videos and information on how to do this. This is the bottom of the transmission with the lower engine splash shield removed. On the right where my flashlight is shining is the drain bolt for the transmission pan. The left is the adjustment, fluid adjustment bolt. To the right is the drain bolt. And to the left is the fluid adjustment bolt. I see a lot of people on YouTube talking about draining and refilling exact amounts of fluid. None of that's necessary. There's a very simple adjustment procedure mentioned in the service manual for how to make sure your fluid level is accurate. And we'll cover that here in a few minutes in the video. You use a 19 millimeter to remove the transmission drain bolt and drain all of the fluid out of the pan. And use a 10 millimeter to remove all of the transmission pan bolts. This is what your transmission pan will look like. You need to clean the magnets, which are kind of the round donut shaped things in the middle. Clean them good. Clean the whole inside of the transmission pan thoroughly, as well as remove old gasket and or use a razor blade to scrape off any remaining gasket material so the entire thing is completely clean. This is the old transmission oil strainer that I removed, and this will be the location up under the transmission where I've installed the new one. It mounts with three 10 millimeter bolts, the center bolt being longer than the other two. You just simply unscrew it, replace it, and torque the bolts back in their original locations to 70 inch pounds of pressure. You also want to make sure, just like you did with the transmission pan, that you use a razor blade and scrape the mating surface on the bottom of the transmission clean to remove any old gasket material as well. 
Now that you have the transmission pan all nice and clean and the transition pan mating surface all clean and the new strainer installed, you can put the transmission pan gasket on the transmission pan and put it in place. Hand tighten all of the transmission pan bolts, get them snug, and then torque them to 70 inch pounds of pressure in the order that is shown on this image. This is the recommended order per the service manual. I have no idea why this is the magic order, but this is the order that the service manual calls for. This is showing where the housing is that the paper filter sits in. Where my flashlight is shining on, there's two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom and two 10 millimeter bolts on the top. It's a lot easier to get to if you remove the uh, air intake housing piece. It's got two 10 millimeter bolts. I've got it just sitting on top of the motor where I took it loose. And one of them is on the left side of the radiator housing there by the cap and the other is on the right side. You just take them both loose and wrestle that out of the way. There's also an o-ring inside the housing that you want to pay attention to replace and that is the filter that you'll be replacing. The rubber side goes in towards the transmission. This is an image of what the service manual calls the CVT fluid warmer located on the bottom front right of the transmission or the driver's side of the transmission uh, very close to the radiator cooler inlet. I have an arrow drawn to the line that you will see that is the line that goes out from the warmer to the radiator cooler and this is where we're going to disconnect the line to use for our flush. This image shows where the line from the warmer goes into the CVT fluid radiator cooler. There's no need to take the hose loose at the radiator side. You'll just be disconnecting where it connects to the warmer. It is aligned directly above the lower radiator hose. Here I'm showing you where in order to do the flush I disconnected that black hose from the CVT fluid warmer. I did connect a fitting to it going to the drain bucket, but it really wasn't necessary. Once you open it up, it'll drain out. Uh, the line, however, going from the fluid warmer to the bucket, I connected. 5 16 line would be best. Then I started to had somebody start the car until a couple of quarts drain out, turn the car off, refill, do a couple more quarts, stop the car refill and I did one more quart and it started coming out clear so then we stopped the car refilled and then we went on to check the fluid level. The procedure to adjust the fluid level is fairly simple. One, the car needs to be level. Two, you need an OBD ELM327 Bluetooth adapter of firmware revision 1.5. These can be had on eBay or Amazon or so for approximately 10 to $15. This is a picture of the one that I happen to have. Now this adapter is used in conjunction with the CVTZ50 app for Android, which is a $4.99 purchase from the Google Play Store. Once you've connected the Bluetooth adapter and synced it to your phone, with the ignition on, CVTZ50 will show you the current temperature of the fluid under data monitoring. As you see, I have circled in the image of your transmission. Now that you have your line from your warmer to your radiator cooler reconnected and your Bluetooth dongle is synced to the app on your phone, you then leave your foot on the brake, start the car, cycle the car through each of the drive positions from park to DS back to park, stopping five seconds at each position, and then monitor your CVT50 app 
to see when the temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius. When it's at about 40 degrees Celsius, you may be able to take a 14 millimeter and open up that adjusting drain bolt. If the fluid, once the fluid gets to where it is just dripping out, you can close the bolt and your fluid level is correct. Obviously, if nothing comes out, you need to add some more fluid to it and then wait until it gets to where it's just dripping. Once it's just dripping out, like I said, you close the bolt and your fluid is correct. And you are done changing your fluid, flushing the fluid, changing your filters. Hopefully this video has been a help to you. Uh, we'll try to list some tools, things needed, and materials in the comments below, as well as a link to another video that I watched that used the same flushing procedure, which is really where I got the idea from. Thank you for watching.